What three words do you think of when you think about childbirth? Is pain and fear two of them? How about pleasure, joy, love, ecstasy, orgasmic? We've been conditioned by a legacy of medicalized birth that often strips away people's pleasure and power, and they focus on knowing everything that could be happening at every moment and why there are benefits to medicine, this overuse, this restricting people often to bed and directing them rather than respecting, listening, supporting, and offering comfort and connection is really depriving people of their pleasure. Hi, I'm Deborah Pascali Bonaro, founder and director of Orgasmic Birth and host of the Orgasmic Birth podcast. I'm happy to share with you today my five tips to transform pain to power with pleasure and love. And you can do this whether you're planning to birth at hospital, at home, or in a birth center. But before I begin today, I want to offer you my free guide, how to have your big O birth. If you go to orgasmicbirth.com forward slash the hyphen big hyphen O, you will get my free guide and it's going to have everything I'm going to share today and even more, some great birth stories. And we'll also give you 40% off our documentary orgasmic birth that will take you even deeper into seeing how people bring more love, joy, and connection to their birth. You also can just go to orgasmicbirth.com and there, if you join our mailing list, you'll receive it. And I know that people People ask me all the time. They want more. So we offer a pleasurable birth essentials class. It's a virtual go at your own pace where I will guide you. And if you go to orgasmicbirth.com and you look at the top, there's tabs for parents. And there you can see all our classes and our products. I even do private classes with people. If you really want to go deeper into journeying, what might be holding holding you back? And what are the skills and tools that you need to build your pleasure treasure chest? So let me begin today with our five tips to transform pain to power with pleasure. And so the first one I always say is name and release your fears. And we all have fears about birth. It's normal. As I said, we have this legacy of medicalized birth. And you may be hearing birth stories from your grandparents, your parents, your friends. And sadly today, we're hearing too many people that come to birth with birth trauma. And the stories of pain and fear are often the predominant stories that are told. So we really need to look into the past. We want to honor the people that have had challenging and painful births, but ask them if you have the opportunity to learn what would they recommend? What do they think about now that they might have wanted to do different? And explore for yourself, what are your fears? Identify them address them. And many of your fears can actually be released. Knowledge is power, right? Taking classes, finding things that really support what does healthy, gentle birth look like. And it's not just me talking about orgasmic birth. If we look at the science, and you've heard me say this in other episodes, science supports a sexy birth. Science supports that people are able to move on on their own, to be listened to, to be respected, to have support and doulas. And I talked about that in the past. Doulas really do make a difference. And doulas are also there if you have fears. A doula in prenatal visits is going to let you talk about what are those fears and help you identify. There's an acronym that doesn't apply to all your fears, but some, if you use the word fear and say, the F is false, E evidence, A appearing are real. So false evidence appearing real. So when you think about your fears, and I always like to have people write them down, what are the ones that with good knowledge, good information, we can kind of say that was false information, just like saying that all births have to be really painful. 
Some are, but many times we can transform pain to power with pleasure. So really take the time to really think about what are your fears? What do you need to help you to overcome them? As you heard in a prior episode from Dr. Sarah Buckley, when we really look at the hormones of birth, right? Fear actually creates adrenaline, stress hormones, and stress hormones are designed to slow or stop labor. So no mammal, no human is going to give birth where they don't feel safe, where they're more in fear. So nature designed this to say, we have to release those fears for labor to proceed. So a really important first step is really looking at your fears. So my second tip is love. Flow those birth hormones and please go back and listen to Sarah Buckley's podcast. There are two of them talking about how we can help that hormone of oxytocin and the other birth hormones to flow. So when you think of love, especially if your partner, you're listening or doulas, you're listening here, um, how can you help people love through labor? And if you're pregnant, think about how are you going to bring your love for yourself? Um, what are the things that you do for yourself to love yourself every day? And I know we live in a culture where that can be challenging for some people. So pregnancy is a time to really begin to say, What's one thing you can do today to really show that you love yourself? The other thing is you're growing this little human inside of you. How can you bring your love to your baby? Is it a touch? Is it a, I love to say that baby massage starts in utero. Do you take the time each day to massage your baby and your belly and maybe even say out loud, babies from 34 weeks on have developed really good hearing and they love to hear their parents' voice. So if you're the birthing person just saying out loud that you love them or that you're waiting for them, what are your words of expressing love? And if you're the partner, um, you also, how are you going to bring your love to yourself, your love to your partner, and your love to that baby if it's encouraged and safe for you to be touching and massaging both your partner and the baby to be bringing your words of love. So partners, doulas, my tip for you is that your job is really to love through labor and for birthing people, for women listening, to really be vocal. How do you want to be touched? What are words that you want to hear in labor that are loving? What are ways that you're going to bring this environment of love so that your oxytocin can flow freely? And the more you bring that love, right? The more joy you'll feel and the less pain you'll feel because it is in more stress that we release the adrenaline in love we release the oxytocin. So how will you love through labor? My third point, and it kind of, these all go together, right? Is to create birth ambiance. So I want you to envision right now, maybe even grab a piece of paper. Um, I want you to think about creating a really intimate, maybe sexy date night. And this could be alone with you or with a partner. So just think about, pick a time in the future, maybe even close your eyes for a minute right now. Take that deep breath in so that you can just breathe in this love and intimate feeling and exhale away any fears, any stress, another breath, kind of just bringing you to this safe space where you can think about this intimate time in the future. And I want you to really visualize what would you like the lighting to be? Um, are you someone that likes candles? Do you like it dimmers if you have them? Do you like darkness? Um, do you like fluorescent lights, right? And I'm being a little fictitious because most people don't want kind of those bright lights 
in the middle of intimacy, but maybe you do. So what do you think the lighting would be that would help you to feel safe and sexy? So really think about that. Now, the next is we're going to use all our senses. This is sensuality, right? What do we see? What do we smell? Do you have certain smells that just Ooh, turn you on or just make you feel peaceful. What are they? Are there smells? Some people love lavender, I do, or jasmine or chamomile or vanilla. Other people have rose. It might be different flowers. What are those smells? Maybe even after a nice rain, right? That kind of dew and smell. So think about the smells that kind of turn you on. So next is sounds. What do you want to hear? And do you have a like sexy playlist? Do you have favorite love songs that could actually help you be in that loving moment? Do you like the rainforest? Do you just want to get kind of ambient sounds in the background? Or do you like silence? So really, you know, be visualizing all this now. Take it in. Maybe there are certain genres of music that you like or a favorite artist that you just say, oh, I hear that music and I just am getting into that sexy space. You also can work on visualizations. Um, what are some of the things that you can create in your mind's eye? Are there images that just bring you deeper? Some of you I know are going, yes, 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 I'm very visual. And I want these different images that are going to take me deeper into feeling safe and private and sexy. So we're working on what we see, what we smell, what we hear. What about taste? Um, are there certain foods I've shared with you? I love dark chocolate, but I love berries. And there are so many things to me that are sensuous. So is there maybe a special food you want to have first or um, something that you want there to just have to nibble on in different ways? So what do you want to taste? And then the last one is touch. So take that deep breath in and really breathe in safety and warmth and exhale and just feel that connection to your body and your breath and start doing kind of a visual scan. You know, where do you like touch that just feels good? You know, sometimes in, in my classes, we do whole body mapping and go deep into touch and helping you find the spaces that are kind of that pre-touch, that are like turn on touch, and that are like, ooh, the big O touch, right? So start thinking about as you're getting intimate again with yourself or a partner in this beautiful ambiance you've created, where do you like to be touched to start beginning? that intimate loving feeling and then go deeper where are the places that are really turn on and where are those places that really bring you to that orgasmic state and equally important to note if there are places not to touch or not to touch first um, we need to all really know our bodies and always stay in safety especially if you are a survivor so we will be doing more on that in the future but I want to just honor always proceed at your safety. And when you're thinking about touch, be clear for yourself and that'll help you be clear for your partner. So when you feel that you've got that kind of what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste and what you feel or touch um, really visualized, you might want to just gently bring your eyes open if they've been closed and maybe even pause right here and write them all down and come back to it. Create a list. This is your growing list of ambiance. And I call it birth ambiance because wherever you're birthing, you want to be able to create this 
ambiance. So if you're birthing at a hospital, what are the things you can bring in to create it? Now, I do have to say, if you're in a hospital, don't bring real candles. There's oxygen there and you'll blow the place up, right? So you have to get those electric candles. But everything else you should be able to bring and make sure that you have music because when you transform the ambiance into your safe and sensuous space, you're going to feel completely different than being in a hospital room with bright lights and strange beeps and noises. So think about it. We often say, right, the right place to give birth is also the right place to make love. So the more you can bring that environment there, the better. They've actually done studies and they know that if you give birth um, in a room that feels safe and sensuous and is very home-like, you actually have less interventions, shorter labors, and better outcomes. But if you give birth in a hospital room that looks like any other hospital room, so the association, it's a sick room, it makes you feel like a patient and you feel inclined to just get into bed, we see longer labors and have more challenging births. So your environment really, really matters. As a matter of fact, I often say like that bed, if you're in a hospital room is gymnastic equipment. And we'll get to that in a minute because you want to move and change position. And I love, and I see birthing spaces all around the world where no longer is the bed the center of the room. It might be a mattress over in the corner um, where the room itself looks like more play space, a tub, you know, a private bathroom and a shower, but a tub in the room and a bed that's movable and things that rock and balls and cubs. And there are so many different comfort things now that really birthing space should look like very free flowing space. So the more you can create that, the better. So my fourth tip to move to pain to power um, with pleasure is pleasure and comfort. So comfort are all the things that you can do to both help your baby navigate their twists and turns into the world. But when they're having an easier journey, you feel it as less pain and more comfort. So you really want to listen if you're the birthing person to your body, partners and doulas really be checking in what positions help. And we know that often getting a rhythm them. Penny Simpkin, my mentor, always says, you can tell if someone's coping well in labor if they have a rhythm. And what's interesting, and Penny has said this, is like, what else do we often get rhythms with? Intimacy and making love. Um, we also often have sounds. There's so many similarities, but rhythms in labor might just be gentle swaying, might be the rhythm of the breath and breathing, might be literally dancing to that favorite artist or favorite song and dancing your baby into the world. But when you think about movement too, I always like to say, especially if you might be pregnant now, sometimes your fingers swell a bit. And for me, my rings are a little bit tighter over the years. And so if I'm trying to take a ring off and I want to pull it over my kind of swollen knuckle and I try to pull it straight, it's not going to go. It's going to get stuck. Um, but if I want to get it off, I'm going to maybe even get some lube, but I'm going to wiggle and jiggle. And before you know it, I can wiggle that ring right off. And that's kind of similar to this big baby inside. If we're going to stay still, and especially if we're laying in a bed and not using gravity, helping that baby to come out and find its way is going to be longer, harder, and more painful. We know that if you lay in a bed in the first stage of labor and in second stage too, gravity matters. So finding positions often that lean forward, help the baby to rotate, that wiggle and jiggle, help that baby to find its way 
through the body, through the cervix and the vagina and out into the world. So when we're thinking about comfort too, having tools, birth balls, peanut balls, I mentioned the cub, it stands for comfortable upright birth. So definitely within my classes, I demo all of these and I'm happy to guide you through how you can use them because positions and leaning forward positions really do matter. Penny Simpkin also has what she calls the three R's, that relaxing, finding that rhythm I spoke with, and ritual. A lot of things in labor, ritual is also another word for repetition. What do you repeat again and again? And it can be your breath keeping it low and slow and deep. It can be that movement, that swaying or dancing your baby down. A ritual could also be a visualization and your mind is so powerful. When you can turn your mind into seeing your body opening like a flower blooming. Um, there are so many different visualizations that can help you be in touch with your body and your baby and really help transform rather than resisting a sensation by saying, oh, this is pain to changing and bringing that ritual of I can do it. I can do this, or I am powerful, or birth is powerful, and I can do it. So rituals for many people are affirmations, are words and images that they use. Sometimes I'll even guide you to create birth art and put some of these affirmations and images around the room. So comfort is comfort in our mind. Comfort is finding positions in our body and partners. Comfort is the way that you can touch and hold. There are so many different points, some acupressure points that actually bring great comfort and I'll share them inside my classes or definitely read more in our guides in our work, but knowing as a partner places that you can touch, how to do counter pressure, and sometimes even just holding when people are having a really intense sensation in labor. It's nice to literally have someone be there, their touch like a doula or a partner is just strong. It's like saying, I've got you, I'm here with you. And then in between sensations, it's more that rubbing that massaging. So then you say, oh, my lower back, and you want someone to just rub away on it. But during the sensation, it's usually a counter pressure, an acupressure point, or a real good hold. And then in between, it's really that loving rubbing touch that's helping you work out any stress and helping to relieve discomfort and prepare you for the next one. Now, remember that these sensations, I call them, right, or surges, your personal power surge, or waves, I don't like contraction, because that just means pain. But when you create that language for comfort too, and you're working with them, you have that sensation, and then you have a really good break. In early labor, the break is way longer than the sensation. You might have five, six, seven minutes between a sensation and a 30 or a 45 um, second surge. As labor gets active, right? They're coming every three to five minutes and lasting a minute long. But that still means in between each one, you feel like you do today. You have time to go grab a drink of water and you should be drinking a lot of water in labor. You need it. You also have time to just rest. Some people even doze between them if it's the middle of the night and that's fantastic. Or even in the afternoon, we all need power naps and rest because we don't know how long that journey will be. And we have time in between for that loving touch that's different than the kind of touch of the surge that we're having. So really thinking about comfort. I have to add water. If you have a 
haven't seen our film on YouTube, Birth in the Sea, I would encourage you to look at, not that I'm suggesting everyone birth in the sea, but it is amazing to see that sometimes we have birth in such a box and more and more people are moving outside that box. Even in our documentary, Orgasmic Birth, we have a birth outside on a beautiful sunny day. Tammy and Bill had their baby on their deck outside. So really, when we think about birth environment, find that place that's safe and sexy to you, but also think about water. And so lots of people, part of their comfort kit is to either rent a tub or birth in a facility that not just the kind of tub that you might have in your own home, but it's really a big birthing tub. So you can immerse your body in it. And a lot of people call water the aquadural instead of the epidural, get your aquadural. So I'll talk more about water in a future episode, but I want to plant the seed there. And my fifth tip is open to your sacred sexuality, right? And I've said this before, but sexuality is an integral part of the personality of everyone. It's a basic need and aspect of being human, and it can't be separated from other aspects of life. And that's a quote from the World Health Organization. There are many definitions of sexuality, and I hope by now you may have even written your own. If not, take a pause and write down what sexuality is to you. So when we're open to our sexuality and birth that may first require a lot of healing. It may require education. Have you taken good sex ed classes? If not, it's amazing how much more there is to learn all the different ways of pleasure and orgasm that are available to women and pleasure to all people, right? So when we open to our sacred sexuality in birth, we're talking also about looking at, again, touching where are the places that we can touch that will bring us pleasure and comfort. It's not necessarily a focus on having an orgasm in labor, but we know that pain and pleasure travel on the same pathway. So when we stimulate that pleasure, we're going to feel more pleasure and far less pain. So where, where would you want to be touched to stimulate pleasure? What ways might you move? What about kissing? Um, how would that be? And you'll see both in our film and in a lot of the stories that we're talking about, many people find that kiss either during a sensation or after really can transform it. And certainly in the moment, so many people welcome their baby. And as they greet their baby, you see that connection between partners where this is really the culmination of their love and that beautiful kiss of welcome with all of them. What about eye contact? Is that something that you like in intimacy or not? Nipple stimulation. For a lot of people, nipples are very sensitive. Another zone that can also bring pleasure. What sounds, again, do you want to make? So are there ways that you feel comfortable connecting your sensuality and sexuality into birth and opening to it. And that may be a lot at pulling away the shame. Sometimes there's a lot of shame around sexuality. There also is a lot of shame around bringing sexuality to birth. So these are big topics to really explore for yourself, to journal, write down your thoughts about this. And with your partner, each of you make some notes on listening along here and then talk about what's coming up for you. So I love this quote from Karen Ehrlich, understanding the sexuality of childbearing could lead to improving the health of our world. And I really have to say, I agree to that. And I certainly agree that more people need to know how sexy a scientific birth can be, that everything we're sharing is really, really based in science. So the other thing I want to just throw in here that 
it's important that all these tips I gave you, you actually feel comfortable to talk to your caregivers about because the attitude of your caregivers matter. If you've hired a caregiver and they don't kind of support you in this or they want you more, you know, laying in a bed rather than looking at water and movement and shower and balls and an active space for birth, you're going to see that providers that limit options often have higher rates of interventions. So you definitely want to make sure that your caregivers on board. And I was just doing a private class yesterday and really did say it never hurts to get a second opinion. If you have any doubt and always ask your caregiver, like how many births have you seen like this in the last kind of three to six months? And, you know, what is the proportion of clients that use doulas, that birth in water, that labor actively that birth in more upright positions. And if you're not getting the answers you want, a second opinion, find a completely different practice. Maybe if you're with a physician, try a midwife, vice versa, really explore even different locations, home, birth center, hospital, and ask those questions. You're entitled to really find the caregiver that is going to respect your wishes and that you feel safe and confident with because your caregiver's paradigm of birth often becomes the one that you have. And certainly, you know, we all, or at least I try periodically to win the lottery, but you don't want to do that in birth. You don't want to think, well, I'm at a different practice, but I'm going to really try to do it my way. That's hard to do. And remember in labor, you want to release, you want to get into this safe and sexy space. What would it be like if you were planning this sexy evening and you had this stranger that kept walking in and out and wasn't honoring your privacy, wasn't honoring what you want wanted to do, that you had to keep advocating for your needs. How would that evening be versus being with someone that you could communicate well and feel really safe and honored with? So birth is a day, as again, my mentor, Penny Simpkin says, you will never forget. So you really deserve to do it in your way. And I know that you can transform pain to power with pleasure. And so again, I hope you'll visit orgasmicbirth.com, um, join our mailing list and get my guide to your big O birth. If you haven't seen our film, I hope that you'll take a look at it and really look at how people birth in different ways. You'll see a variety of births. Um, listen to our other podcasts. We have so many people telling their orgasmic birth stories and you'll hear the tips that help them transform pain to power with pleasure. And if you want to go deeper with me, I'm always honored to either work with you privately or go along and take our pleasurable birth essentials class. I'll guide you much deeper into each of these tips and many more in ways that you'll have your own toolkit. I call it my pleasure treasure chest of things that you can do to make every birth a positive birth, wherever you birth and however you birth. Wishing you a pleasurable day.